So today's project on the bench is a little upgrade to my QRP Labs QCX Plus 40 meter uh, CW transceiver. We're going to be adding a little bit of automatic gain control. So stick around, check it out. This QCX Plus is a really nice CW only transceiver and it's remarkably sensitive. Oftentimes I, I can hear things on this radio that I can't hear on my big radio up in the shack. The problem that it has though is it's very sensitive for these low level signals but it also doesn't have any automatic gain control. Meaning that uh, if you've got the volume dialed up to uh, listen to a very low level signal and uh, a very strong signal comes in, you'll get blasted by the volume of it because there's nothing to control that volume. So an automatic gain control circuit can really help with that. Now in most receivers, the automatic gain control will adjust the gain in the IF stages of the receiver. Well, the QCX Plus is a direct conversion receiver, so there are no IFs. Essentially, our RF comes in, goes through our quadrature sampling detector, or TALO detector, which essentially outputs I and Q values, double sideband I and Q values. And then we've got a preamp, that's actually a pair of preamps, because we're, we've got that applied to both the I and the Q. And then we do a 90 degree phase shift to one of the paths, so that when we sum them together, we get single sideband output. That then goes through a 200 hertz filter, audio filter, then we've got an adjustable uh, level control before we go into the final audio amp. And here's what that path looks like in the schematic. This is our uh, quadrature sampling detector. This is the, these are the two preamps for the I and Q. And then we just have uh, essentially a gain stage here. And uh, this network is our 90 degree phase shift. And then by adding those together here, we wind up canceling the unwanted sideband. And then we go through our 200 hertz CW filter. That's this stage right here and then a final uh, amplifier stage. And then this connection here goes off to our volume control or gain pot, which goes into the final two audio amplifiers to drive the headphones or the speaker. Now the problem is that uh, we don't really want to apply the gain control up here because we have to do it in a balanced way and affect both paths exactly equally. And that might upset the nice phase cancellation that we're getting for sideband rejection, so we don't want to do it there. And uh, now let's let the uh, CW filter work on a relatively high level signal so that we, we improve the signal to noise ratio there. So really probably where it makes sense is just to adjust the gain right where we do the volume control. And that's what the AGC circuit we're going to use does. So essentially what the AGC circuit is going to do is sense the audio output level and feed that back into essentially an audio peak detector that's going to drive the gate of a MOSFET and that MOSFET is going to be placed in parallel with the wiper of the volume control. So as the gate voltage of the MOSFET is increased, the channel resistance of the MOSFET decreases and therefore appears in parallel with the volume control pot and will tend to minimize or effectively turn down the volume when it gets too high at the, at the output here. Let's take a quick peek at the curve tracer to see how the channel resistance of the MOSFET changes with changes in gate to source voltage. Now this is what the variable channel resistance looks like on the curve tracer. This is showing essentially the uh, drain current versus drain to source voltage. Straight lines would represent effectively a resistor. And what we're seeing here are four separate uh, values, basically four different gate to source voltages, and that is changing the channel resistance as a function of that gate voltage. You can see as I vary these things linearly, we can kind of see how we can change that channel resistance at these various gate to source voltages. That variable resistance is what's being used uh, in the AGC circuit that we're playing with. Now giving credit where credit's due, uh, this is the manual here for the uh, AGC module and this design was actually proposed by Jim, AJ8S, uh, in the uh, QRP Labs uh, groups.io and it's implemented on a tiny little circuit board. It has this oddball shape because there are many different variants of the QCX transceiver and this will nestle right into the circuit board around some components uh, for many of those designs. So here's the schematic of the AGC circuit. But the way this works is the audio input comes in here goes essentially into this uh, audio peak detector which essentially drives the gate voltage on this MOSFET. And this MOSFET uh, its drain is connected to the wiper of the volume control pot. And then there's an adjustable bias control to kind of set the pre-bias that's going to appear at the gate of the MOSFET to effectively adjust the sensitivity of the HEC circuit. And this final MOSFET here is used to essentially shut this circuit off to, to turn off the AGC 
and on some versions of the QCX that can be controlled through a menu item. In my case I'm just going to wire this so that it, the AGC is enabled all the time. All right, to get an idea of why this receiver needs some AGC let's take a look at uh, receiving some signals at different levels. So here's a signal that's about 30 dB below uh, S9. So it's about a 1.5 microvolt, 1.6 microvolt signal. And that's probably about the minimum I'd probably be able to work because otherwise they wouldn't be able to hear me. So we can hear that uh, being received uh, pretty well. That's again pretty low level, but I'm going to leave the volume here. Let's go up by 10 dB. We hear how much louder that's getting. We can actually see the indication here as well. Let's go another 10 dB. So at this level here, this is still 10 dB below S9. Uh, let's go actually to an S9 level here. We can actually hear that's actually quite loud. That's S9 on a receiver, or uh, 50 microvolts. Sometimes you can, you can hear signals that are uh, maybe 10 or 20 dB over S9. Let's go 20 dB over. So it's pretty clear that we need some AGC, that there's a dramatic difference in volume between even an S9 signal and something that's 10 dB over or 10 dB under S9. So the AGC should help out with that. The version of the QCX that I have uh, wasn't designed to have the AGC module just essentially plug right in. So it just has to be kind of wired in free space. But I'm going to take advantage of the fact that the plus 5 volt connection and the connection that would enable or disable the AGC, which I'm going to ground, are right next to each other. So I'm going to connect them up to a 5 volt and ground uh, jumper pin that I have here. And those two pins should suspend this board here uh, quite nicely. Uh, once I solder it in place. So that should work well. Alright, we've got it all wired in here. The 5 volts uh, coming right off of that uh, header pin. Adjacent to that is ground that's connected up to the AGC control pin which we're going to leave grounded so the AGC is always on. And then uh, this, this blue wire here is going to ground so that connects my ground up. And then the connection to the pot is actually being done uh, with this wire up here going up to the mute line here and then the connection to the audio output is coming right here at the output of the audio amplifier and that connects up to this node right here so we should be uh, good to go give it a try okay played around with the adjustment a little bit here so uh, here I've got the volume set to about where I would probably normally have it and this signal again is about 30 dB below S9 and there's 20 dB below S9 a 10 dB below S9, a S9 signal, about the same as the other one. There's 10 dB over, and now 20 dB over. That would be a very, very strong signal. It's not getting blasted out of my seat. <laughs> so there is a little bit of a pop when the AGC is kicking in hard for those really strong signals, but that's okay because uh, that doesn't happen that often. But I think this AGC uh, worked out uh, quite well here. Well, I hope you enjoyed today's project, putting the little AGC module in my QRP Labs QCX Plus transceiver. I'll put some links down below to the QRP Labs website, the QCX uh, transceiver uh, products, as well as the AGC module. If you liked the video, give me a thumbs up. If you haven't subscribed to the channel already, please consider doing so. And thanks again as always for watching. We'll see you next time.